Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the GPT 5.2 model. And instead of going through the benchmarks like I usually do or just build a random app, let's actually build something that might make uh, some people some money. That is solving some bounty issues, like so solving some, getting some bounty off of uh, some repositories over at GitHub. So a great example is the NAN nodes firecrawl repository. In here, it's open source. Sometimes if we want to implement a specific feature, if we want to fix something and it's not really a priority, we'll just open up an issue and place a bounty for that. So you or like anyone can just go in there and solve that and get money off of doing so. I solved a, bu a bug. It wasn't actually a bug. It was a feature that we wanted to implement, which was the following. Probably till the time that I launched this video, you, you are only able to create a firecrawl node like this. So you add the firecrawl node and that's it. The node is just like this. If you would have the AI agent use the information from this node, you would either have to place this node before the AI agent, or I don't know, like just implement something that kind of sends the context from whatever you gathered from that node over to the AI agent. Because we didn't have the ability of using these nodes as tools inside of the AI agent. Now that we do, after the, the fix that I, I've just recently Im implemented, what we basically can give the AI agent access to is things like search for recent AI news using the firecrawl tool. Now I just specified using the firecrawl tool because inside of the system prompt, I have nothing. So, okay, now it's, wait, map a website to discover all URLs. Uh, I don't know why it used the scrape node, but let's see where it gets with this, okay? Scrape, oh, it's probably because I don't have the scrape tool. So let me add that scrape. Okay, search. It's not the scrape tool that I want. I it, I want the search tool. All these features like this one right here, let the model define this parameter. This needs to be included. Um, let's see something else like use custom body. I don't want to let the AI have access to that just because, well, yeah, we don't really need that. So let's start over. Let me get this query. Let me place it in there. And now the AI agent will likely use the tool effectively. Uh, I brought back that result. You can see the output here. So those are the URLs we got. Title, description. This is all from Firecrawl. And then we get the whole context in here. The LLM kind of summarizes all the news and everything. And there you go. So to implement this, all I did, and I got the prompts in here. By the way, I think the bounty was up to like $50. Uh, you could have fixed this in about like 30 minutes, to be honest. Um, ideally, you want to test it. Uh, I spent a good amount of time testing it. So let's not go with 30 minutes because that's too, I don't know, that's, that's like selling something that isn't really true. But let's say uh, one hour and, and a half, two hours. Yeah, let's aim for two hours, like for, I don't know, like in two hours, you could have earned like $50. And two hours, I'm considering someone that uh, might not might not know a lot of coding, like just vibe coding it out, right? The first prompt I, prompt I sent was this one. This is the official NAN nodes for Firecall. I just gave it the right context of where it's at, what's happening. I need to add tool support for it in a way that all the current nodes can also be used as a tool for an AI agent node. So it's just like if I were talking with, I mean, anyone. But the main thing here and what I feel like really optimizes my prompts inside of Cloud Code, especially, is just adding this at the end. Do you have any questions before proceeding? Because usually the questions are like something that I didn't think about and didn't really add that in the context. So it's great to just, just place like just, just this phrase will help you a lot. So the questions were uh, target and a version, the feature requires blah, blah, blah. So this is really important to know uh, if I want to add it, add the tool feature it requires NAN 1.79 plus. And, and this is kind of tough because new users, not new users, but old users um, might have a problem, might have to update their NAN to use the latest version of Firecrawl. But I mean, the trade-off is, is fine. All operations or selected. So should it use all 20 operations? And that's exactly what I want. So I just said, yes, these are all my responses. Uh, it asked more here, but yeah, whatever. It's just a matter of debugging and just testing it out, telling it what happened. So the only error I really got was in the in the scrape node. So if I zoom out, let me place in a firecrawl tool. Uh, let's select the scrape. 
So scrape a URL. Okay. In the parser, what was happening is if I toggle this, letting the AI agent select the parser, it would usually fail. That led me to an iteration of just getting the error, sending it as context to the LM, wait for it to try to fix it uh, until eventually it got it right. Honestly, if you're a developer, this is kind of the laziest way <laughs> to fix it because ideally you would look at the response, understand, like go over the documentation from Firecall, understand what's going on, like how you should send that request and everything. But I was in a meeting, so I, I was just like, test it, copy everything, send it over. And that's why I emphasize that just vibe coding it out can solve a lot of different things. Okay, so whenever using Scrape, we also have access to summary. So this is like, this is additional, right? I think that these type of errors, these type of issues are more about getting that feature to work and not necessarily like fixing everything. Some people really overthink that. I myself, like I overthink things a lot and I try to make it as perfect as possible when in reality, I'll take a long time to fix that. And it's not, it's just not ideal to aim for that every time. So yeah, we get the sources. Maybe we should add, and usually like, I like to look at the API reference. So scrape summary, this summary is specified in the formats. Okay. Interesting. So what I'm doing here is just like understanding what we have. So this is the current node. This is what was implemented. Ideally, we should have a way of selecting the formats here. Since there isn't, and this isn't really part of the task, part of making the nodes work as tools, then that's overthinking, right? Like it's, it's just additional to do that. If I do not add that for now, then the user just won't have access to the summary format. But some things needs immediate fixing. So for example, this node, which is the Firecrawl multi, let's see, batch scrape multiple URLs sim simultaneously. If you check out the Firecrawl node for this right now, it's actually like topics, like buttons that you click, then you click the button again, add another URL. And that's a problem because LMs won't be able to click that button. Therefore, we wouldn't be able to define, let the mo model define which are the URLs that it could use. So in those cases where, I mean, you implemented a way for the node to work. So that's already pretty cool, but it won't work. Like this node would be useless. Really testing through it and iterating enough to get a solid product will likely raise the chances of you, I don't know, maybe getting known by a company if it's your interest of getting hired by that company or so. So yeah, I'm really getting off topic now um, because we haven't even tested the GPT 5.2 model yet. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is just spinning up a instance of the Firecall uh, NAN nodes prior to my changes. So yeah, all these tools won't exist. Um, let's check Firecrawl and there you go. You won't be able to really add a fire called two and nice. So this is how it was before, by the way, let me show the batch thing. So fire crawl batch scrape multiple URLs. Here it is. So you would just click to add different URLs. So if there were a, an array here, you couldn't just drag the array over so that it could read all the URLs, nor could the AI agent add an array here. Okay. Um, let me delete that. And now, now that we have everything. Let's run Codex. I like to run it inside of the actual node. So let me do a Codex. Actually, let's just go with the Codex interface thing. Include recent files, blah, blah. Yeah, leave that. Okay. Let's just choose GPT 5.2 selected. I'll have it use the high reasoning instead of extra high because yeah, it could actually like consume a lot of credits. Switch mode, agent, that's all I want. Yeah. Okay. So what we're testing here is uh, with Cloud Opus 4.5, I managed to have it create everything and solve the task just by typing this in along with, yeah, just answering the questions and then reporting some of the errors. But the error was like kind of minimal. Uh, the thing here is that this prompt involves a lot of uh, agent tool usage because it needs to browse the internet for Firecall's documentation as I do not provide that context. So. Let's see, like this, I feel like this is more of a test for the agent instead of the LLM, but it's also a test to see like how good the LLM is in using these different uh, tools and everything. So yeah, this should take a while. Let me just pause 
the recording and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so it's done. Let me remove my face out of the way. Uh, the thing is, it just ignored my question. Like, do you have any questions before pr proceeding? And then it just went on implementing a bunch of things. It changed the readme as well. Um, apparently it made the node have be usable as a tool. Like this is kind of easy. Just adding that parameter. Uh, what else? Let's let, I guess we'll just have to see how, how it's working inside of NAN. Okay. NAN is loading up. Let's check fire crawl. And then there's a fire crawl tool down here. Let me click this fire crawl tool. Okay. So we have access to everything, I suppose. So let's see this. Let's have it uh, use the parser. Let's have it use that URL, whatever. Uh, actually, let's let it. That's that should be good. Um, and finally, let me just specify a URL for it. So this is what was like. This was the issue from Cloud Opus 4.5 where it didn't I, it didn't understand how it should use the parsing from Faircrawl. Let's see if with GPT 5.2, uh, we get the same error. So scrape this website, get me a summary of it. Okay, let's see. It used the tool and got the same error. Yeah, so yeah, same error. But let's see if other tools worked. So Firecrawl, Firecrawl tool. Um, let's have it use the search and let's let the AI decide which is the query. Search for recent AI news. Make sure to just get back uh, one sentence. Worst prompt ever. Uh, used it, worked. I mean, this seems okay. Seems good. Uh, but. Honestly, it was much faster with Cloud Opus 4.5. So I guess this is really the place we should be looking at, which is comparing in red what was generated from Cloud Opus 4.5 and in green was what was generated using GPT 5.2. As you can see, in some places, it seems like it's much shorter for GPT 5.2, but then suddenly it gives more context. But overall, Opus seems to give a better instruction instead of just like plainly saying extract data or like in crawl, the display name is crawl a website when really it makes more sense to have crawl a website and scrape all pages since it's able to do that. Uh, this is important both for like people to understand like what they can build with this as well as for the AI agent. So like this, for example, description, maximum number of pages to crawl, use lower limits, it's it's really specifying everything. While in GPT 5.2, all we got was max number of results to return. But yeah, I mean, you could have like kept iterating and asked it to be more specific, give it more more context. I feel like it's kind of exactly the difference from the benchmark. So if you get the SWE bench verified, it's around 80%, while Opus 4.5 is around 80.9. So yeah, it's kind of hard to say that one is much better than the other one. Uh, let me check the ben like rebench thing. So SWE rebench, do we have the new GPT model here? Seems like we don't. Um, but yeah, eventually whenever we do, I feel like this benchmark is m much better than uh, other ones. And actually OpenAI also published the SWE Bench Pro with a 55.6%. And that abs would absolutely like crush Cloud Opus 4.5, which has 45.89. But I mean, from my tests, uh, I don't know, like at this point, it's it's nearly, it's hard to, to really get to a final result for these things. I think we'd have to like work with this for like over a month or so to get to a final result. So let's check Next.js evolves. I really like to check this one as well. Um, let's see if GPT 5.2 is here. Nope, not yet. But would you look at that for Next.js builds, Cloud Opus is falling behind GPT 5 codex. But in time, like I said before, I feel like Cloud Opus 4.5 is actually like the fastest model to build with. And yeah, I mean, it just wastes a lot less tokens. I don't know, like it's just smarter. So yeah, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this style of video, just talking through the changes, maybe even talking about random things and how you can implement them. Let me know by liking the video and maybe even leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.